Today we're going to finish the conclusion discussion for our Force of the Earth lab, which we started yesterday. So let's first start by looking at a few sample whiteboards, which kind of illustrate the results that we got for our Force of the Earth lab. Remember that we were looking at the relationship between the force of gravity and the mass of the object. So if we change the mass, how does the force of gravity, how is it affected? And if we change the height of the object, how is the force of gravity affected, if at all? Uh, this is one sample whiteboard from yesterday. They found a linear relationship between mass and the force of gravity. And this was the equation that they found. They had a slope of 9.926 newtons per kilogram and a very small y-intercept. And they found that when they changed the height, the force of gravity remained basically constant. And so they found that there was an independent relationship between the force of gravity and height, or that there was no mathematical relationship. Here's another sample whiteboard, also showing a linear relationship between, relationship between force and mass and an independent relationship between the height of the object and the force. This group got a slope of 10 newtons per kilogram. And the last sample whiteboard, also showing the same type of relationships. We look at the equation for force versus mass. We have a slope of 9.5 newtons per kilogram and an even smaller y-intercept. So here are the three equations that we looked at from the three sample whiteboards, uh, rounding up to the nearest tenth for the slope and the nearest hundredth for the y-intercept. In class yesterday, we discussed whether or not the y-intercept should be there or not, and we decided that that y-intercept is actually insignificant and actually shouldn't be there. One way we said that was if we reason through the fact that if the mass of this of an object is zero, we would expect that the force of gravity in that object would be zero, so it would make sense that the force is zero, zero. So therefore, the y-intercept is insignificant and does not need to be included. So when we look at the equations, we see that the slopes are all around in the higher nines or 10. We decided that the slopes are all about 10 newtons per kilogram. Yesterday we talked about the fact that this tells us that for every one kilogram of mass, the object will feel an additional 10 newtons of force. This value is called the Earth's gravitational field strength. It represents exactly how much force a single kilogram of mass will feel. And we can represent that with the variable g, which stands for gravitational field strength. And so in our equation, we can replace the slope with that lowercase g. And so we get the force of gravity is equal to the gravitational field strength times the mass. Or whenever you see this written in, uh, in physics textbooks, for some reason they always put the mass first. And so the way that is usually written is you can calculate the weight of something, or the force of gravity on it, how much of the Earth is pulling it, if we multiply the mass of the object in kilograms times the gravitational field strength. For the Earth, it is this equation. You always multiply the mass of the object times the Earth's gravitational field strength, which is 10 newtons per kilogram. So in your formal lab write-up, which you're going to work on with your lab group today, um, this term, the Earth's gravitational field strength, is a new term, and so make sure when you're discussing question 6 and question 7 that you include that in your conclusion discussion. And also a reminder, which we talked about yesterday, since mass was the only thing that affects the size of the force of gravity, you only have to answer the eight conclusion questions for the first experiment, not the second experiment with force versus height. And don't forget to hand in your completed lab report on my desk today. Have a great Thanksgiving break.